The intelligent investor is considered to be the Bible of value investing. The author, Benjamin Graham, was an American economist and investor, well known as the father of security analysis. The book was published in 1949 and quickly became a classic. The principles it embraces have been widely read and taught for years. The main assumption is, sound investment principles produce generally sound investment results. According to Warren Buffett, this is the best book on investing ever written. At Read & Grow, we believe that books can change your life. Whatever your situation is, someone out there has gone through the same and shared the lessons in a book. Subscribe and join us on our quest to solve problems one book at a time. This book is not directed to speculators. Benjamin Graham explains that the speculator's primary interest lies in anticipating and profiting from market fluctuations. According to the author, beating the market really means beating oneself. Market forecasting means you try to do what a lot of other people aim for, and you should do it better than the other competitors. Timing is important for the speculator because he wants to make his profit in a hurry. The author thinks that the investor's primary interest lies in acquiring and holding suitable securities at suitable prices. Investors as a whole are not traders of securities. They are owners of the country's larger enterprises. They make money not out of each other, but out of the businesses. The value investing approach is buy securities during periods of pessimism and low prices, sell them during periods of optimism and high prices. The author firmly believes that investors cannot base their operations on market fluctuations. Price fluctuations can only provide them an opportunity to buy wisely when prices fall sharply and to sell wisely when they go up. At all other times, they should forget about the stock market and pay attention to their dividend returns and operating results of their companies. The book is meant for two kinds of investors, the defensive and the active. It can help the defensive investor to conserve his capital, gain a reasonable income return, and protect himself to some extent against inflation. It can help the active investor to take advantage of the opportunities to purchase securities well under their fair value determined by competent analysis. Investment policy depends on the investor's choice of either the defensive or aggressive role. The defensive investor is guided by three requirements – A. Underlying safety B. Simplicity of choice C. Promise of satisfactory results Ben Graham thinks that the defensive investor should divide his funds between high-grade bonds and high-grade common stocks. He can select common stocks for his portfolio following four rules. 1. Not excessive diversification. A minimum of 10 different issues and maximum of about 30. 2. Each company selected should be large, prominent, and conservatively financed. 3. Each company should have a long record of continuous dividend payments. 4. The price paid for each should be reasonable in relation to its average earnings for the last 5 years or longer. He recommends that the price does not exceed 20 times these earnings. Active investors' activities are 1. Buying in low markets and selling in high markets. 2. Buying carefully chosen growth stocks. 3. Buying bargain issues. 4. Buying into special situations. The profit comes from events like sale of the business, merger, recapitalization, reorganization, and liquidation. The author warns investors not to succumb to the wiles of the metaphorical Mr. Market. He suggests following the motto, never buy a stock immediately after a substantial rise or sell one immediately after a substantial drop. How successful the stockholder's investment is depends on received dividends and the long trend of the average market value. The behavior of stock prices departs radically from the concept of intrinsic value. Prices respond to any change in current earnings or short-term earnings prospects. Stocks sell much higher when the situation is favorable than when it is unfavorable. The perplexity arises from the fact that sometimes the market reflects what is now happening in business and sometimes what is expected to happen later. Investors cannot expect to beat this game of the stock market. The investor can profit from market fluctuations only by paying them a little attention. More important than what the market has been doing is the result of its action, how it changed the price level in relation to the underlying value of a security. 
The author emphasizes that investors need a sense of financial history. They should trace typical patterns of earnings and price behavior for various kinds of securities over a period of 25 years or more. If you're interested in the topic of investing, make sure to check our summary of the book, Charlie Munger, The Complete Investor.